everything you wanted to know but were never told by David Ick Books, dedication, to Jamie and Gareth for their brilliant work in support of what I do, to experience, what I have liked and what I have not liked, it all leads, to wisdom if we allow it to, other books and DVDs by David Ick, books, Phantom Self, The Perception Deception, Remember Who You Are, Human Race Get Off Your Knees, The Lion Sleeps No More, The David Ick Guide to the Global Conspiracy, and How to End It, Infinite Love is the Only Truth, Everything Else is Illusion, Tales from the Time Loop, Alice in Wonderland and the World Trade Center Disaster, Children of the Matrix, The Biggest Secret, I Am Me, I Am Free, Dot and the Truth Shall Set You Free, 21st Century Edition, Lifting the Veil, The Robot's Rebellion, Heal the World, Truth Vibrations, It Doesn't Have to Be Like This, DVDs, Worldwide Wake Up to a Live, David Icke Live at Wembley Arena, The Lion Sleeps No More Beyond the Cutting Edge, Exposing the Dream World We Believe to Be Real, Freedom or Fascism, the Time to Choose, Secrets of the Matrix, From Prison to Paradise, Turning of the Tide, The Freedom Road Revelations of a Mother Goddess, Speaking Out, The Reptilian Agenda, Details of Availability at the back of this book and through the website www.davidook.com Contents, On the Road to Now, Chapter 1 The Biggest Need to Know Chapter 2 The Inversion Chapter 3 Login, Log Out Chapter 4 1 Big Program Chapter 5 Arch and Visitations Chapter 6 Software Elite Chapter 7 Mind Control and Shape Shifting Royals Chapter 8 Casting the Spell Chapter 9 Holding the Spell Chapter 10 Advancing the Spell Chapter 11 Terrified of Truth Chapter 12 Before Your Very Eyes Chapter 13 War 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 We Love It Chapter 14 Saying the Unsayable Chapter 15 Is It Hot or Is It Me? Chapter 16 The Assimilation Chapter 17 Synthetic Human Chapter 18 Perceptions of Freedom Postscript Bibliography Index I've looked at life from both sides now, from up and down and still somehow, it's life's illusions I recall, I really don't know life at all, Joni Mitchell, and now I understand what you tried to say to me, how you suffered for your sanity, how you tried to set them free, they would not listen, they did not know how, perhaps they'll listen now, Don McLean pity the nation, pity the nation whose people are sheep, and whose shepherds mislead them, pity the nation whose leaders are liars, whose sages are silenced and whose bigots haunt the airwaves, pity the nation that raises not its voice, except to praise conquerors and acclaim the bully as hero and aims to rule the world with force and by torture, pity the nation that knows no other language but its own and no other culture but its own, pity the nation whose breath is money and sleeps the sleep of the too well fed, pity the nation, oh, pity the people who allow their rights to erode and their freedoms to be washed away, my country, tears of thee, sweet land of liberty, Lawrence Furling Etty no society wants you to become wise, it is against the investment of all societies, if people are wise they cannot be exploited, if they are intelligent they cannot be subjugated, they cannot be forced into a mechanical life, to live like robots, they will assert their individuality, they will have the fragrance of rebellion around them, they will like to live in freedom, freedom comes with wisdom, intrinsically, they are inseparable, and no society wants people to be free, the communist society, the fascist society, the capitalist society, the Hindu, the Mohammedan, the Christian, no society, would like people to use their own intelligence because the moment they start using their intelligence they become dangerous, dangerous to the establishment, dangerous to the people who are in power, dangerous to the haves, dangerous to all kinds of oppression, exploitation, suppression, dangerous to the churches, dangerous to the states, dangerous to the nations, in fact, a wise man is a fire, alive, a flame, but he cannot sell his life. He cannot serve them. He would like rather to die than to be enslaved. I'll show title definition. I want to make it clear before we start what the title represents. Everything you need to know, but have never been told does not refer to all that people need to know in terms of information and knowledge. How could you put that between two covers? Religious books claim to do this but they are works of self-delusion and perceptual imprisonment. Everything you need to know in this case refers to the information necessary to open entirely new ways of thinking and perceiving reality, both in the seen and unseen from which everything else will come. This book is a start not a finish. It is written in layers with information placed upon information that together reveals the picture by connecting the parts. The parts are fascinating, but the picture is devastating. Prepare for a perception reboot. Your assumptions are your windows on the world. Scrub them off every once in a while, or the light won't come in dash isaac asimov. I am closing in on 30 years since I was first dubbed the maddest man in Britain and most other places come to that. Newspaper headlines. Delighted in my alleged madness and I was a comedian's dream. Mention of my name was enough to get a laugh with no joke necessary. I was the joke. But, as it turns out, they were the joke all along. They didn't know, and neither did I, that what they perceived as madness was a mind emerging from the collective madness which is called normality.
the madness that masquerades as sanity, the coma sleep that believes it is wide awake. There are none so enslaved as those who wrongly believe they are free, and none so crazy as those who wrongly believe they are sane. Today as truly intelligent people look in my direction from literally all over the world it can safely be said that rumors of my madness were greatly exaggerated. For what is the perception of madness, but the perceiver's perception of sanity? What is that perception? but what collective society has decreed sanity to be. And what is that collective society, but they who control, influence and police opinion to manipulate the norms that they then decree. Sanity and insanity are defined by perception and not necessarily by reality. Human history is awash with those dubbed mad and dangerous who were to be fated as ahead of their time often long after they had passed. Perceptions of sanity and insanity are not even static and they change as knowledge moves on. Tell a caveman that it's possible to fly to the moon and he would call you crazy. Tell someone today that it's not possible and they will say the same. It is an extraordinary and incredibly debilitating human trait this cognitive dissonance between what we call past and present. People are so willing to mock and condemn those long gone who ridiculed or even murdered the visionaries who could see then what is now considered to be obvious. But the same people are so unwilling to acknowledge how they themselves react the same way today to those who see the world differently to them and the norms that mold and solidify their sense of reality. Minds that genuinely seek understanding come from the immovable foundation that they don't know at all. They are humble and wise enough to realize that humanity knows an almost incomprehensibly small fraction of what there is to know. Thus their minds are open at all times to all possibility. I don't mean only the possibilities that never challenge and expose ingrained religious, cultural, scientific and societal beliefs. I mean all possibility with none excluded. To consider all possibility and not only belief system possibility is, to much of humanity, like garlic to a vampire. Unyielding perceptions are recycled and confirmed by sheer unquestioned repetition. While newspaper headlines told the world of my madness I was, ironically, becoming sane. Amid historic levels of ridicule and abuse that I faced in the 1990s I was walking into the light of freedom, real freedom, where I could think the unthinkable and say the unsayable and not give damn what people made of it. How many allow themselves that priceless gift? And yet it is there for the taking whenever they choose. If I can do it, so can everyone. Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu said, care about people's approval and you will be their prisoner. I was born in Leicester, England, on April 29, 1952 and grew up on a council estate in a very different world to the one we see today. There was no internet, computers, smartphones or tablets and only one television channel until I was three. Not that we could afford a TV until years later or even needed one. We had next to no money but I never felt deprived. You made your own fun and followed your own interests. They weren't delivered through a TV screen or the latest app. Life was simpler then and you had more time to think, ponder and daydream, my default state. I can now see patterns in my life, with the perspective of hindsight, that were guiding me through the maze since childhood. But at the time they appeared to be only random events, successes and failures. I see them very differently today. Football soccer, was my passion as a kid, and steam trains, and I set out to be a professional footballer. A series of coincidences and bits of luck gave me that chance and all was going well until rheumatoid arthritis ended my career at age 21. Arthritis first appeared when I was 15, just six months into my career as a goalkeeper with Coventry City, and became progressively worse affecting more joints. I played in pain for years before it became too much. My second choice of career had always been journalism and that's where I headed next. I set my sights on being a television presenter with the BBC Sports Department. Although given my circumstances I was told this would be almost impossible, as many had said about professional football. I had left school at 15 to join Coventry and had no educational qualifications let alone a university degree. I was advised that getting into journalism would therefore be very difficult. But the pattern repeated itself with more coincidences and bits of luck that led me into newspapers, radio, regional television and eventually to be a national television presenter with BBC Sport. The pattern was never more obviously at work than when I joined the British Green Party as a member of a local group that I started on the Isle of Wight where I live off the south coast of England. Within weeks, through more coincidences and inexplicable happenings, I had been elected a national speaker representing the party's views in the media. It was now that the patterns in my life of setting a goal and then doors synchronistically opening and closing to achieve that goal could no longer be denied. What was going on? I had no idea. Fig 1. Figure 1. 
My life seemed to be a series of random events until the recurring pattern became hard to deny. By the late 1980s I had tired of the television world which I found vacuous and full of its own self-importance. This phase was thankfully coming to an end with my life about to change dramatically. I began to have strange experiences at the turn of 1989 in the sense that when I was alone in a room there always seemed to be someone or something there. A presence. I guess you would call it. The feeling became stronger and the presence ever more tangible throughout the year until I had to address it. I was sitting on a bed in a London hotel room in early 1990 while still working for the BBC. The presence was so obvious that I said, if there is anybody here, will you please contact me because you are driving me up the wall. A few days later I was in an Isle of white newspaper shop with my then young son, Gareth when suddenly I found myself unable to move my feet. It was like magnets were pulling them to the floor. As I was trying to understand what was happening a voice, actually a very strong thought form, passed through my mind which said, go and look at the books on the far side. My feet unfroze and I walked in a bewildered daze towards the little book stand where I had only seen romantic novels before. They were still there but in among them was a book that took my eye because it was so different. It was called Mind to Mind and written by a professional psychic medium, Betty Shine. Fig 2. As soon as I saw the word psychic I wondered if maybe she could explain the presence I was feeling. I read the book in 24 hours, contacted her and made an appointment. I told her nothing about what was happening to me and said only that I wanted to see if her hands on healing, an exchange of energy, would help my arthritis. This was of secondary importance to me, however, would she pick up anything around me that could account for what had been happening for the last year? I saw Betty four times and the last two visits changed my life forever. I was lying on a medical type bench on visit 3, while she was treating my left knee, when I felt something like a spider's web on my face. I remembered how she described in her book having the same feeling when other dimensions of reality were preparing to communicate. Psychic or inter-reality connections are made at one level electromagnetically and my spider's web was electromagnetic energy of the kind that makes the hair on your neck and arms stand up among an excited crowd or in a haunted house. I didn't mention the web that I was feeling but a few seconds later Betty Shine pushed her head back and said, Wow, this is powerful. I'll have to close my eyes for this one. She said she was seeing a figure in her mind that was asking to communicate with me. They knew that I wanted them to contact me, but the time wasn't right, Betty told me, although she knew nothing of what had happened in the London hotel room. She began to repeat the words that were given to her. He is a healer who is here to heal the earth and he will be world famous. He is still a child spiritually, but he will be given the spiritual riches. Sometimes he will say things and wonder where they came from. They will be our words. Figure 2. Betty Shine. Knowledge will be put into his mind, and at other times he will be led to knowledge. He was chosen as a youngster for his courage. He has been tested and has passed all the tests. He was led into football to learn discipline, but when that was learned it was time to move on. He also had to learn how to cope with disappointment, experience all the emotions, and how to get up and get on with it. The spiritual way is tough and no one makes it easy. He will always have what he needs. This could have been once but no more. He will face enormous opposition, but we will always be there to protect him. A week later I returned for my last visit and more information was given to me in the same way. One man cannot change the world, but one man can communicate the message that will change the world. Don't try to do it all alone. Go hand in hand with others, so you can pick each other up as you fall. He will write five books in three years. I did. Politics is not for him. He is too spiritual. Politics is anti-spiritual and will make him very unhappy. It did. He will leave politics. He doesn't have to do anything. It will happen. Gradually over a year, it did. There will be a different kind of flying machine, very different from the aircraft of today. Time will have no meaning. Where you want to be, you will be. I met another medium soon after the last meeting with Betty Shine who gave me similar information, which included, arduous seeking is not necessary. The path is already mapped out. You only have to follow the clues. We are guiding you along a set path. It was all arranged before you incarnated. The point about following the clues is exactly what has happened. Yet another series of coincidences led me to Peru in early 1991. My amazing visit over the best part of three weeks, with countless more coincidences and synchronicities, culminated on a hillside overlooking the ancient ruins of Silastani. 13,000 feet above sea level in the Andes near the city of Puno on the shores of Lake Titicaca. I had spent an hour walking around the ruins admiring the stunning landscape and then headed back to Puno in a minibus taxi with the driver and a Peruvian guide. A short distance down the road I was daydreaming, as usual, and gazing at a hill to my right when the words come to me, come to me, 
come to me began repeating in my mind. I asked the driver to stop and strong intuition told me that I needed to climb the hill. I said I would be back shortly, but I was more than an hour because of what happened. I stopped among some large stones that were no longer there on my return in 2012. My feet began to feel as they did in the newspaper shop, magnetically sucked to the spot although this time with far greater power. I felt a drill-like sensation on the top of my head and then a flow of energy from my head through my body to my feet and into the ground. Another flow came the other way. My arms stretched out at 45 degrees towards the sky when I had made no conscious decision to do so. Then a voice or very clear thought passed through my mind which said, it will be over when you feel the rain. This sounded utterly crazy as I stood under a cloudless Peruvian sky and a ferociously hot sun. The energy passing through my body with my arms still in the air became so strong that I was shaking, as if subjected to an ongoing electrical shock. Fig 3. I would move in and out of conscious awareness with my focus disappearing out there and then returning. During one of the conscious moments I saw a light grey mist over the mountains way in the distance and very quickly the mist became darker. Blimey, I thought. It is a rhyming over there. The storm came out of the mountains towards me in a ridiculously short time and I watched in some shock as a deluge of steroid rain swept across the land in front of me. By now my body was really shaking from the impact of the energy passing through me until when the rain hit me and I was drenched in an instant. With that the energy stopped and I was standing there with jelly legs and my shoulders were agony after almost an hour stretched out above my head. I felt nothing when it was all going on, but my god I did now. I had no idea what had happened but the consequences were soon on public display. Figure 3. Recreating my Silastani experience on a return visit in 2012. I returned to Britain with information and concepts pouring into my conscious mind as if a bubble or dam had burst and the universe and his mate were coming in. My brain basically froze for three months in the way that a computer freezes when asked to process too much data at the same time. I went on primetime television still in freezer mode trying to understand what was happening to me and that interview triggered levels of mass ridicule that few can have experienced. I saw very clearly Dash and Constant that those who ridicule others are always the most ignorant and stupid. Big mouths and empty brains obviously come as a bear. I couldn't go anywhere without being laughed at and ridiculed and every bridge to my old life was ablaze. I can't say that it wasn't difficult in the extreme but you could have offered to take everything away and plant me back where I was before, throw a million in the bank for luck dash and I would still have turned you down. Everything before me said that I had destroyed myself. But something deep within me knew this was going somewhere even if I had no idea exactly where. For three months after Peru I lived my life in a bewildered daze like someone dropped into a strange alien world without a map or compass. Then over a few days everything began to unfreeze. I was David again, but not really. To those who knew me I appeared to be the same man I had been before the funny time. This may have been true outwardly. But I was not seeing the same world that I had before Peru. My mind had been opened and I saw reality in a very different way. Before Peru I had seen dots. Now I saw pictures and how everything connected. My experience has been that life gives you your greatest gifts brilliantly disguised as your worst nightmare and so it was with the mass and incessant ridicule that set me free of the prison that most people live in. The fear of what other people think. This was so essential for what was to come with the communication of information way beyond the norms of human society which continues to this day. From this post-brew period especially, my life became an incredible synchronistic adventure as information would come to me in the form of people, books, documents and personal experience. It was like some unseen force was handing me pieces in a puzzle. And that quote from 1990 captures the theme perfectly. Arduous seeking is not necessary. The path is already mapped out. You only have to follow the clues. We are guiding you along a set path. It was all arranged before you incarnated. Information communicated through Betty Shine proved just as accurate. Sometimes he will say things and wonder where they came from. They will be our words. Knowledge will be put into his mind. And at other times he will be led to knowledge. This is precisely what has happened since 1990 as I have delved ever deeper into the rabbit hole of human control and manipulation. The information has even come in an order that made it easiest to comprehend, and there has been so much to comprehend across a great swathe of subjects that appear on the surface not to be connected but fundamentally are. For the first few years the focus was largely on a network of global families manipulating events and enforcing their will on human society. From the mid to late 1990s revelations about a non-human dimension to this network were given to me. And since the early 2000s the theme has been the illusory nature of physical reality and ever more detail about the world we think we live in. 
but don't. Each stage has taken the same pattern. First the new theme would emerge followed by information from all directions relating to that theme as if someone had pressed a button. As each new stage begins the previous ones still continue and this has demanded the processing and fitting together of phenomenal amounts of information across a whole spectrum of subjects both ancient and modern. Day after day, year after year one have walked out of my little office in the early evening with my brain aching and begging for mercy. But the older I have got and the more I have done it the easier the processing has become. I hope that I stand as living proof to people that no matter what is thrown at you over whatever period you cannot be stopped unless you stop yourself. You have the power over your life and you simply have to take it back from those you think have the power. The human power, no power dynamic is just a confidence trick, a mind game. And we need to see through the illusion that humanity believes to be so real. If you refuse to give up, feel sorry for yourself and run away you will get somewhere. You have to. Amid all the ridicule and abuse I have written a stream of books which are read all over the world and I have talked to ever bigger audiences all over the world. What happened to that nutter we said had gone mad? How come so many are now listening to what he says? What? Why? How come? I didn't quit and I never will. That's how come. The mainstream media locked away in their time warp still portray me as the man who existed for just 3 months nearly 30 years ago and the same is the case with those who get their views and opinions from that media. The truth is very different as anyone new to my work is about to find out. Why do we live on such a planet of tears when life could be and should be so wonderful? There is an answer. And here it is. The world is full of people who have never, since childhood, met an open doorway, with an open mind. E. B. White, owns upon a no time, in a land called forever, there was only, awareness in awareness of itself, all possibility and all potential, waiting to manifest, there was no form, only the potential imagination of form of every possible kind, this was the infinite state of pure awareness from which all that we think we see has ultimately come, that opening paragraph captures so many common themes encoded in the narratives and symbolism of religion and the myths, legends and accounts of native and ancient peoples the world over. They further include the story of how a negative or evil force emerged to challenge the omnipotence of the original creative force. From this appeared the universal theme of God be the devil or Satan and endless other names awarded to this source of chaos, upheaval and manipulation. Most people can't see the commonalities amid the apparent confusion of different religions, names, cultures and emphasis. But if you can see past the differing detail the same basic story is in plain sight. This is only possible, however, if you can expand perception beyond the dots and see themes and connections that then come clearly into view. Followers and advocates of religions and storytellers among native peoples continue to use the language of the ancient originators, and this can obscure the fact that what is being described can today be expressed in the language of science and computation. They will talk of the father and the son, for example when these were only the terms used to describe massive, though ultimately simple, concepts in a way that those of the time could grasp. What is the point of talking about quantum physics and quantum computers to people still knocking rocks together? Storytellers and carriers of the knowledge obviously used contemporary terms and symbols to get their point across and this was true of all religions and forms of worship. That was fine and essential then but the narrative needs to move on. Knowledge of the hidden realms of quantum mechanics and so much else has expanded dramatically while religions and native peoples, with honorable exceptions, continue to use the language of another age. An update is urgently required and that is one aim of this book. We will see that. 1. Themes of religions and native cultures are basically correct, emphasis often on the basically. 2. Most accounts have become so inverted and distorted from the original that billions today are following and worshipping the very opposite of what they think they are. 3. We should not be worshipping anybody or anything when we are the anybody, everybody and anything everything. To show this to be true requires a total re-evaluation of what we call reality dash the world we think we see and with which we think we daily interact. I have called this opening chapter the biggest need to know because without this knowledge nothing else can make any sense, and its suppression has ensured that generation after generation in culture upon culture complete entire lifetimes while never answering the basic questions of, who am I? Where am I? What am I doing here? There is a fundamental secret behind why the answers have been kept from us and when that veil is lifted human society, ancient and modern, morphs into crystal clarity. It is indeed a case of everything you need to know, but have never been told. Systematically imposed ignorance entraps humanity in perceptual servitude and allows the tiny few to control the very many. Fig 4. If we are to free ourselves from this tyranny the veil of perceptual illusion must first be lifted. Fig 4. Who am I? Where am I? Reality check the scale of illusion is staggering. Ask all but a relative few if they live in a solid, physical world and they will look at you in blank bewilderment for even posing the question. Of course we do. 
don't be silly. But actually, we don't. No, we don't. Consider that for a moment. Every morning we experience our solid body getting out of a solid bed to eat our solid breakfast and head through solid streets in solid vehicles to go to solid work or solid wherever. But all the time, there is no solid. As illusions go, they don't get any more extreme. I chuckle when I hear the fake news mainstream media dismissing other versions of events as conspiracy theories and too far-fetched to believe while reporting the world from the perspective that everything is solid when it isn't. The self-delusion is monumental because so is the scale of perception programming. I have been labeled mad and insane for nearly 30 years by mainstream society, especially the media. On the basis of that very self-delusion, many of the things I say are happening would not be possible if reality was physical and solid but it's not. Those who dismiss and ridicule what I say are coming from a perception of solidity and have no idea what the world really is. Hardly surprising, then, that they say I'm crazy. We are told that our solid, material reality is made of atoms and that everything is solid and physical because of them. But, hold on. Atoms have no solidity and so cannot a solid world make. Fig 5. Atoms are said to have a nucleus orbited by electrons in a relationship akin to many solar systems and everything else is empty space. How can this make a solid world? I contend that the nucleus and electrons have no solidity either and that even their material existence is illusory although quantum physics gives them marginal materiality. Here's a quote to put that marginal into context. If the nucleus were the size of a peanut, the atom would be about the size of a baseball stadium. If we lost all the dead space inside our atoms, we would each be able to fit into a particle of dust, and the entire human race would fit into the volume of a sugar cube. Figure 5. How can atoms with no solidity create a solid world? Makes that racism deal look a bit ridiculous. A. Eh? Quantum physics says that 99.9999999% and more of what is called ordinary matter is empty space. In fact, space, another illusion, is not actually empty but bursting with energy that we can't see. There is space, energy that we can see and we call this reality, and there is space, energy, that we cannot see and we call this empty. Human sight is verging on the blind when you compare what we can see with what we can't see. Almost the entirety of infinite existence is denied to us while we are perceptually enslaved in a tiny band of frequency that science calls visible light. Fig 6. The electromagnetic spectrum is only 0.005% of what exists in the universe in terms of energy and what is referred to as matter. Fig 7. Some say it's a bit more, but not much. Think about that, just 0.005%. Now contemplate this, humans can only see a tiny fraction of that 0.005% in the band of visible light, Fig 8. Most of the rest is called dark energy and dark matter by mainstream physics. I don't buy their version of what this dark really is and I use the term only in the sense of it being unseen by human sight senses. People say that this or that is not possible and this or that is crazy while virtually 100% of what exists in infinite forever is not visible to them. A little humility is urgently required. Given that mainstream science dash quantum physics apart, will largely not explore beyond the scene and what is considered to be the tangible it becomes clear why its concrete conclusions have proved to be so inaccurate and often ridiculous. Yet this same science is perceived and promoted today by its bewildered advocates and believers as the arbiter of all knowledge. This is extraordinary on the face of it, but then not so much when you see the whys and wherefores of the global perception deception. The illusion is so deep that we have never even touched anything in the way that we think we have. Oh, but you are holding a book, right? No. You are holding an electromagnetic field of information. The book, with electromagnetic fields of information. Your hands. The experience of touch is the connection between different electromagnetic fields. The experience of apparent salinity is really electromagnetic resistance between energetic fields of different frequencies or densities. You who are not solid can't walk through a wall which is not solid because of electromagnetic resistance and not physical resistance because there is no physical. This all sounds so fantastic and unbelievable to the human conscious mind. But it's true. We don't hear anything until the brain has decoded electrical communications from our ears. The ears don't hear, the brain does. The same applies with sight, taste and smell. A falling tree makes no noise unless someone is there to decode vibrational disturbances triggered in the air into electrical signals that the brain then decodes into the sound we recognize as a falling tree. Otherwise the tree falls in silence. We hear human speech only when vibrational information fields generated by the vocal cords are decoded by the brain. Modern pain relief techniques involve blocking messages from the point of pain from reaching the brain because until that communication is made you can feel no discomfort. It's the brain that says ouch, not the point of impact. The entire world that we think we see, in the form that we think we see it, 
only exists in a few cubic centimeters at the back of the brain where visual reality is decoded. Remember that human society is founded on the physical world being real, tangible and solid, and this delusion is driving the perceptions and decisions of politics, medicine, media, corporations and science, quantum physics apart, the whole shebang in fact. Everything is based on the most basic misunderstanding of our very reality and in the shadows beyond the realm of the scene this is all by design. Those at the cutting edge of mainstream science are proving experimentally that physicality is an illusion as genuine scientists and seekers of truth break free from Stone Age orthodoxy. Here's a telling quote from artist and filmmaker, Sergio Doporek. Figure 6. Our world is only a band of frequency. Figure 7. All we can see is a sliver of the 0.005%. Figure 8. Home. Consider that you can see less than 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum and hear less than 1% of the acoustic spectrum. 90% of the cells in your body carry their own microbial DNA and are not you. The atoms in your body are 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
a state of being aware. Everything else is detail and illusion. We are not our body. We are that which is aware and experiencing through the body. Fig 9. Awareness in the purest sense has no form but it can experience through form. In its most expanded state it is not even energy. It just is. Our awareness is an expression of the totality of awareness. Hence some religions and native peoples speak of being aspects or children of God or the Great Spirit. Other religions condemn as blasphemy any claim that we are God dash what I call infinite awareness. In its endless and various forms, this serves the manufactured and enslaving belief that we are insignificant, detached, isolated and powerless. None of this is true at the deepest of levels, but it serves the agenda of human control by peddling an acceptance of impotence, servitude and know your place. The late great English-born philosopher Alan Watts, 1915-1973, was right when he said, God is what no one admits to being and everyone is. Religious frocks are symbols of this manipulated sense of detachment and isolation as they stand as sentinels between believers and the perceived deity. They know God better than you do and the Pope slash Rabbi slash Imam are his best mates. What breathtaking nonsense it all is. We are points of attention within infinite awareness as infinite awareness infinitely experiences itself. Figs 10 and 11. This doesn't mean that every point is infinitely aware. If you stand on a mountain you can see a great panorama. But if you stand in a pitch black room you can see nothing. Both are points of attention, awareness, and yet their perception of reality is dramatically different. So it is with the human mind and infinite awareness in its totality, or, in current human terms, even vastly less than its totality. Human consciousness is so asleep, so imprisoned by illusion, it is hardly conscious at all. The droplet is the ocean and the ocean is the droplet. But not every droplet is as aware as the ocean if they become perceptually isolated from the whole. Fig 12. Words like infinite and totality are themselves a misnomer for awareness beyond time and space, or our perceptions of them, but they serve a purpose to contrast with human perceptual myopia. Infinite awareness just is. It is an isness, a state of awareness that knows all and sees all because it is all. The range of potential states of awareness, therefore, span all possibility from infinite awareness in awareness of itself to someone who thinks she's just Mary or Margaret working on the checkout. Humanity is big time at the lower end collectively of this perceptual scale, but, equally big time, we don't have to be. Figure 10, we are infinite awareness infinitely experiencing itself. Figure 11, humans are a point of attention within infinite awareness within a tiny band of frequency called visible light. Figure 12, where does the droplet end and the ocean start? They are one. And so is human awareness no matter what the background, color or creed it perceives itself to be. Figure 13. The brilliant blackness as I experienced it in Brazil. Figure 14. All possibility, all potential waiting to manifest. I have taken psychoactive potions twice, on two nights in the rainforest of Brazil in 2003, in the form of a plant called ayahuasca which tastes a bit like licorice. On the second night in particular, after I entered an altered state, I spent five timeless hours lying in the darkness as a strong, loud voice, taking a female form, spoke to me in detail about the illusory nature of physical reality. It was an extraordinary experience which I remembered in photographic detail. The voice said at the start, all you really need to know is infinite love is the only truth, everything else is illusion. These words were repeated several times, infinite love, infinite awareness in awareness of itself, is the only truth, everything else is illusion. The voice said that I was being taken to where I came from and to where I would return so I could better understand my current reality. In that moment I saw a shimmering, radiant blackness of stillness and silence that somehow shone with incredible brilliance. What was that again a shimmering, radiant blackness that shone with the brilliance of light? Ah! Words do not exist to describe what appears to be a bewildering contradiction to the human conscious mind. Fig 13. This is the infinite, David, the voice said. Yes, infinite awareness in awareness of itself. The stillness and silence of all possibility, all potential, waiting to be imagined into existence. Fig 14. Once again the isolated conscious mind in the thrall of the five senses believes that something must move, take form or make noise to be real. But all these things are simply possibilities manifesting from the infinite imagination of infinite possibility. Speak and you pull one possibility from all possibility. Stop speaking and your spoken possibility disappears back into the silence of all possibility. Realities which move take form and make noise are figments of infinite imagination which manifest as realms of frequency and vibration that interpenetrate each other like radio and television stations at different points on the frequency dial. As the voice said, if it vibrates, it's illusion. 
these realities share the same space and don't interfere with each other unless they are very close on the dial. When this happens we call the result ghosts and paranormal activity. Ghosts and apparitions can pass through walls because they are not operating within the same frequency band just as radio frequencies can pass through walls. I am far from the only one to have experienced this infinite awareness as a vibrant shining blackness. Many have described the same experience to me over the years and human ages and sages of illusory time have known of this indescribable, not place, but state of awareness or being. Near-death experiences are a great source of information about the unseen as they tell of entering a totally different realm of reality after their consciousness. Point of attention, withdraws from the body at death only to return to this reality when the body is revived. Fig 15. Dr. Eben Alexander, an academic neurosurgeon at Harvard for 15 years, is one such example with his near-death experience during a week-long coma in 2008. He went into the coma, caused by meningitis, believing like his scientist father that consciousness exists only in the brain and cannot continue when the brain has ceased to function. Put bluntly, dead means dead. This is the very foundation of mainstream scientific dogma they call evolution that leads deeply bewildered academics like Professor Richard Dawkins at Oxford University to trash any idea of awareness beyond the grave. The deadly duo of arrogance and ignorance that entrap the concrete mind of five cents academia means that not only do they go on their clueless way, but they insist that everyone else does the same. Dawkins said, Figure 15, near-death experience when our point of attention withdraws from the focus and lens of body, mind and expands into a vastly greater sense of reality. You cannot be both sane and well-educated and disbelieve in evolution. The evidence is so strong that any sane, educated person has got to believe in evolution. Or, put another way, you cannot be both sane and well educated if you don't believe what I do. The arrogance of ignorance defined in a single sentence. Serbian American scientist Nikola Tesla, 1856-1943, who is way ahead of the science mainstream, hit the button when he said, The scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. This was the world of Eben Alexander until he opened his eyes from his coma with news of a completely different reality and explanation of life itself. He tells his story in his book, Proof of Heaven, in which he writes about the core or dazzling darkness from where the purest love emanated and all is known. This is what I experienced in the rainforest of Brazil and dazzling darkness is a perfect description of what I saw. The purest love emanated and all is known further describes what I call infinite awareness in awareness of itself, all-knowing, all-possibility potential. Tesla also talked of the core from which everything comes, in the universe there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know it exists. Figure 16, everything is one infinite awareness having different experiences. The force that moves all things. Ancient and native cultures the world over have their own names for this force that gives life to everything. Lakota people in the United States speak of Wakantanka or the force which moves all things. This is a wonderful description of the all that is. Great spirit is another. You can like an infinite awareness to an infinite ocean of infinite possibility. We give names to different oceans like the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian. But they are all the same body of water. We give names to people, countries, cultures, trees, mountains air, rain, planets, stars and galaxies, but they are all the same ocean of infinite awareness in different manifestations, fig 16, once we become disconnected from the influence of expanded realms of this awareness our sense of isolation and apartness from everything else leads to a self-identity with name, race, culture, religion, job, lifestyle and life story, these are not who we are, only what we are currently experiencing, they are an experience, not an I. This is the self-identity that I call phantom self and it is the foundation of human misery, emotional trauma and control. Fig 17. The late singer and writer Leonard Cohen said, If you don't become the ocean, you'll be seasick all your life. If you don't become one with infinite awareness you'll only perceive a little isolated me powerless in the face of forces and events you cannot control. Oh. But you can. Near-death experiences galore have described realities outside the perceptual prison of the body in extremely common terms. One said, it's like being half asleep when I was alive, and totally awake after I was pronounced dead. Anita Morgini, author of Dying to Be Me, said after her own out-of-body experience, when we are not expressing in our physical body, you and I and all of us, we are expressions of the same consciousness. 
This has been a theme of enlightened people throughout the ages and quantum physics is now beginning to catch on and catch up. Anita said that in her out-of-body state of awareness she experienced a realm of clarity where I understood everything and I felt connected to everybody. She was experiencing the force that moves all things and connects everything as one. Anita makes a very potent in out of the body analogy of a torch beam and a warehouse. Imagine you are in a pitch black warehouse with a torch in your hand. All you can see is anything within the beam of the torch. Everything else is invisible or hidden. Figure 18. This is symbolic of the tiny range of frequency, visible light, that the human body can decode and we therefore see. Then, symbolic of awareness withdrawing from the body. Someone turns on the lights right across the warehouse. Now you can see the enormity of what you were part of all along but could not see when your perceptions were limited to the light of the torch. Fig 19. I have just described what happens at death dash you know that inevitability that terrifies most of the human race. Body mind decodes visual reality only within the tiny frequency band of visible light and when our awareness withdraws from the body it withdraws from the telescope focus and suddenly perception massively expands. There is no death of awareness. Only the end of its temporary vehicle for a particular experience. Fear of death is only the ignorance of life. Or... As Rumi, a 13th century Sufi mystic, said, Figure 17, the fake self-identity that holds humanity in servitude to illusion, this place is a dream, only a sleeper considers it real, then death comes like, dawn and you wake up laughing at what you thought was your grief, this place is only a tiny band of frequency while forever lies beyond its perceptual walls, I will be exposing at length the architects of those walls or firewalls as they really are, I have used the following quote from a near death experiencer several times in my books because it is such an encapsulation of reality outside the body, dot, everything from the beginning, my birth, my ancestors, my children, my wife, everything comes together simultaneously. I saw everything about me, and about everyone who was around me. I saw everything they were thinking. Now, what they thought then, what was happening before, what was happening now. There is no time, there is no sequence of events, no such thing as limitation, of distance, of period, of place. I could be anywhere I wanted to be simultaneously. Figure 18. A great analogy for the frequency band we call the world. Figure 19. We are part of something far bigger and ultimately infinite. And this comes from academic neurosurgeon Eben Alexander. To experience thinking outside the brain is to enter a world of instantaneous connections that make ordinary thinking, those aspects limited by the physical brain and the speed of light, seem like some hopelessly sleepy and plodding event. Dot. Our truest deepest self is completely free. It is not crippled or compromised by past actions or concerned with identity or status. It comprehends that it has no need to fear the earthly world, and therefore, it has no need to build itself up through fame or wealth or conquest. This is the reality of life outside the body and there is a force that has sought, mostly very successfully, to keep this from us and imprison our perception in a sense of limitation, I can't and that's not possible. There is so much more to humanity than we have ever understood and what testament to the scale of illusion that so many have been killed, tortured and burned at their stake for revealing this truth or parts of it. The whole foundation of human control can be described in a single sentence, disconnecting the incarnate human mind, what I will call body mind, from the influence of our infinite self or disconnecting the incarnate droplet from the ocean. Fig 20. Everything comes from this and without such disconnection the depth and scale of human perceptual control would be impossible. We will see as we progress how the very fine detail of human society is structured to take that symbolic mountain panorama and lock it away in the pitch black room. Humanity is imprisoned by its sense of reality which comes from its point of attention. Fig 21. Awake philosopher Alan Watts said that the ego, body mind, is nothing other than the focus of attention. This is exactly what it is and so what more potent form of perceptual control could there than to focus attention, sense of reality, only in that tiny sliver of frequency called visible light? Figure 20. The bottom line of human enslavement. Figure 21. If our attention can be focused only in the five senses we cease to be influenced in our perception of reality by our expanded levels of awareness beyond the illusion. Imagine all the people and everything else. The still and silent all that is produces what is called creation through the imagination of its points of attention large and small. This can be anything from creating entire worlds to doodling in a notebook. There can be error, too. In such creations, witness the creation of the atomic bomb. The all that is can be capable of error, not in its purest and most expanded expression, 
but its points of attention can. Even then what is our except another form of experience and what is experience except the road to wisdom and remembering our true identity? How often do our biggest mistakes turn out to be our greatest gifts? According to ancient accounts which concur with my own research and conclusions our very current reality was the result of error and I'll be explaining much more about this in due course. We should also not forget that if we are talking about a state of all possibility then error is a possibility and without this there cannot be a state of all possibility. In the same way, all possibility means that the all that is or infinite awareness is everything and nothing, everywhere and nowhere, it is and it isn't. This has to be the case or it would not be all possibility or infinite imagination. So everything is within nothing and nothing is within everything. Nowhere is within everywhere and everywhere is within nowhere. Once we grasp the nature of all possibility and infinite imagination in the fullness of its meaning all paradox disappears. Infinite awareness is not energy but produces energy as an imagination of all possibility. Creations of infinite imagination and the imaginations of its imagination can manifest as the realms of what we call energy frequency and vibration. The further these imagined creations themselves create and become detached from a state of infinite awareness in awareness of itself the more they fall into ever lower frequencies and so states of illusion. If they fall far enough they end up in the energetic densities that we call matter. Legendary American comedian Bill Hicks, 1961-1994, who had countless experiences in psychoactive drug-induced altered states, said, apostrophe, all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. We are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively, there is no such thing as death, life is only a dream, and we are the imagination of ourselves. This is what the illusion of physical matter really is, energy vibrating so slowly that it gives the appearance of solidity. Scientists don't come much more famous than Albert Einstein and yet he said the same as a comedy club comedian. To know does not require some great formal education, programming. It means simply to know. Mainstream education is structured to stop us knowing by enslaving our perceptions of the possible and it is no coincidence that Einstein also said, the only thing that interferes with my learning is my education. Einstein's explanation of matter was the same as Bill Hicks. Concerning matter, we have been all wrong. What we have called matter is, really energy, whose vibration has been lowered as to be perceptible to the, senses. There is no matter. There is only light and sound. There is only light, energy and sound, vibration, which together give the illusion of physicality when the vibration is slow enough and within the frequency band of visible light, visible energy, the slower energy vibrates the more solid it appears to be, say a wall, and the faster it vibrates the less dense and even ethereal it appears to be, if it vibrates fast enough to breach the frequency band of visible light then we can't see it, when people talk of seeing something appear out of nowhere or disappear before my eyes they are describing phenomena that enter the frequency band of visible light and then change frequency to go beyond it, now you see it, now you don't, now you decode it, now you don't, academics dismiss such descriptions with regard to UFOs and aliens appearing and disappearing because they don't understand what reality is, those more aware of how energy interacts with consciousness, is consciousness, can perform apparent miracles which are not miracles at all, they are the result of knowing how reality works, body mind perception has to call this the paranormal to compare it with its piece size sense of normal downloaded from cradle to grave from mainstream everything. Academics and mainstream scientists download this pea-sized version of reality more than anyone else and then tell us what we should and should not believe. It would hilarious if it wasn't so tragic. Figure 22, different worlds or realities are different bands of frequency like analog radio and television stations on different parts of the dial. Copyright www.neilhag.com Computer universe we have infinite awareness in awareness of itself that pervades everything dash the force which moves all things dash and its creation and creations that express them themselves as realms of energy, frequency and vibration. These creations, worlds or realities can share the same space or the illusion of it, because they operate on different frequencies. Fig 22. What we call our visible universe is one such frequency band reality and operates as a quantum computer system. These are defined as a computer that makes use of the quantum states of electrons and other particles to store and process information. Put more simply the universe is a quantum computer that stores information in the very energetic fabric of our reality and the computing power of quantum states is absolutely off the scale. Current computers are limited by their choice between 1 and 0 which represent charges of electricity that are either on or off. Quantum computing has no such limits and is quite capable of creating and processing universes. Think of a cosmic Wi-Fi field or fields, Fig 23. You can't see Wi-Fi, 
but a computer can decode that hidden information source into a global collective reality on the screen that we call the Internet or World Wide Web. The universe is information stored in the unseen, like you can't see Wi-Fi, and what I will call the human body-mind is a biological computer, in the widest possible sense of that definition, which decodes the Wi-Fi information construct of the universe into a perception of physical reality on our screen, what we experience as the brain and genetic structure as a whole. Fig 24. Elite and massively funded projects around the world are developing quantum computers that mimic our very reality with monsters like Google seeking to lead the way for reasons that will become clear. Here's another point staring us in the face. We have quantum physics because the universe is a quantum computer. Our quantum computer universe is interactive in the sense that we take information and perceptions from the energetic construct and post our own thoughts, perceptions and emotions to impact on the universe. I call it the cosmic internet. Fig 25. The human body, brain is a biological quantum computer and so are planets, stars and everything in our reality as expressions of the quantum computer universe. Cosmic Wi-Fi or waveform information fields are the foundation of the universe and we decode the universe that we think we see from those fields in the way I will be describing. The universe can be summed up in one word, information, and even more accurately in five, information encoding and decoding information. Fig 26. The computer. Internet analogy is apt again. A desktop computer is information encoded to decode information and information sources like disks, data sticks and the internet are encoded to be decoded. Everything is interacting, encoded and decoded information and so is our physical reality. The only place that the internet appears as we experience it with graphics, pictures and text is on the screen. Everywhere else it is information in other forms and the same is true of the way we decode reality. The foundation state of the universe is waveform information or what some call the metaphysical universe, Fig 27. Our five senses convert this waveform information source into electrical signals and send them to the brain which constructs the reality that we think we see, touch, taste, hear and smell. Take a simple flame on a candle. This seems to be so real, but it is only decoded electromagnetic energy information. We create the flame that we think we see. Robert Lanza, an American medical doctor and scientist, writes in his excellent book, Biocentrism, co-written with Bob Berman, that a flame is merely hot gas emitting photons which are tiny packets of electromagnetic energy, each pulsing electrically and magnetically. The brain produces the flame that we see by decoding that information. Lanza explains, figure 23, an image of what Wi-Fi might look like if we could see its frequency band. Figure 24, our reality is like Wi-Fi, a sea of information that we decode into what we perceive as a solid world. Figure 25, Internet symbolism is very close to the truth and the connection is through waveform information, electricity and electromagnetism. Figure 26, The universe is an interactive wireless cosmos in which everything is encoded and decoded information. Figure 27, The foundation level of the universe is waveform information carried in waves. It is easy to recall from everyday experience that neither electricity nor magnetism have visual properties. So, on its own, it's not hard to grasp that. There is nothing inherently visual, nothing bright or colored about the candle flame. Now, let these same invisible electromagnetic waves strike a human retina, and if, and only if, the waves happen to measure between 400 and 700 nanometers in length from crest to crest, then their energy is just right to deliver a stimulus to the 8 million cone-shaped cells in the retina. Each in turn send an electrical pulse to a neighbor neuron, and on up the line. This goes, at 250 miles per hour, until it reaches the warm, wet occipital lobe of the brain, in the back of the head. There, a cascading complex of neurons fire from the incoming stimuli and we subjectively perceive this experience as a yellow brightness occurring in a place we have been conditioned to call the external world. Talk about illusion. Alan Watts said, dot. Without the brain, the world is devoid of light, heat, weight, solidity, motion, space, time or any other imaginable feature. All these phenomena are interactions, or transactions, of vibrations with a certain arrangement of neurons. And Morpheus told an incredulous Neo in the first Matrix movie, what is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. That's all it is, this physical world that seems so real. We see images on television only because of the same decoding process. Screen images are an arrangement of pixels which the brain decodes into the pictures that we think are outside of us and constructs the illusion of movement by literally connecting the dots. 
Fig 28. We see television as moving pictures only because our brains link together still images into an apparent sequence. This also happens with LED screens, video games and human reality. We experience movement in our illusory dreams and what we call conscious reality is just another dream. New Scientist magazine said in a 2009 article that under magnification the fabric of space-time becomes grainy and is ultimately made of tiny units rather like pixels. I have been referring to the body as a biological computer since way back and now I am seeing some mainstream scientists using the term. We think of biological as natural but it is in fact a form of technology when compared to infinite awareness. The body is an extraordinarily advanced computer system, once again in the widest possible sense, which dies when it ceases to function. So does a computer. Goes into sleep mode to conserve energy. So does a computer. Has an immune system. So does a computer. Antivirus software. Has a brain. So does a computer. The central processing unit, or CPU, known as the computer brain, and has a hard drive. DNA etc. So does a computer. The reason they can now connect a human brain with a computer and make the computer respond to thought is because they are connecting two computer systems. Fig 29. One is technological and the other biological or another form of technology. The human body has the equivalent of a computer motherboard with its genetic network and the meridian lines of energy on which the healing art of acupuncture is based. Fig 30. Acupuncture needles and other techniques are designed to balance the flow of energy. Information through those pathways to maintain information balance and communication in the constant interaction between body and cosmic internet. When those flows are out of balance we enter a state of disharmony or disease, what we call physical or psychological illness. We say my computer is so slow today when information flows are out of sync and cause the computer to malfunction. Many laugh at the concept of acupuncture and ask how can you cure a headache with a needle in the foot. Acupuncture meridians operate in circuits and if the blockage in the circuit causing the headache is in the foot it makes no sense putting the needle in the head. The meridian system connects with the chakra vortex points throughout the body's electromagnetic field which connect the body with the cosmic internet and other levels of reality. Fig 31. Chakra means wheels of light in the Sanskrit language of ancient India and the main ones are, the crown chakra on top of the head, where I felt the drill energy on the hill in Peru, brow, or third eye, chakra in the center of the forehead, throat chakra, heart chakra in the center of the chest, solar plexus chakra just below the sternum, sacral chakra just beneath the navel, and base chakra at the bottom of the spine. Each one has a particular function or functions. The sacral chakra in the lower belly processes emotion and so we feel anxiety and nervousness in that area. At its most extreme this affects the colon and gives people the shits and makes them shit scared. We feel love empathy and compassion in the chest because that where the heart chakra vortex is located within the body's electromagnetic field. Figure 28. The brain decodes this into the television pictures that we think we see, but in reality decode. Figure 29. Connecting two computer systems, technological and biological. Figure 30. Meridian lines in acupuncture of the body's motherboard. Figure 31. Seven major vortex points or chakras interpenetrating the human energy field with the heart chakra at the center. Our five senses of sight, hearing, taste, touch and smell are decoding systems. They take waveform information from the cosmic internet and turn it into electrical information which they communicate to the brain. These are different forms of the same information. Different parts of the brain specialize in decoding information from different senses. Fig 32. The brain decodes electrical information into digital and holographic illusory physical, information that we perceive in our heads as the world around us. Fig 33. There is in fact is no world around us and everything exists only in the brain and genetic structure in the form that we think we are experiencing outside of ourselves. Computers work the same way. Information decoding systems and what appears on the screen are all happening inside the computer. Fig 34. There is a phenomenon called synesthesia in which senses merge and someone can hear words and music while at the same time tasting them. Different words and songs in their experience have different tastes. Our decoding processes and how they function create our reality inside the brain. Everything I have said here about the brain and the senses is confirmed by the experience of playing virtual reality video games which hack into the five senses and override their normal decoded reality with another artificial information source that appears to be so real. Figs 35 and 36. A writer in a British newspaper described the experience of playing one such game. Figure 32. Different parts of the brain specialize in decoding information from different senses. Everything we see no matter how far away it appears to be exists in the form that we experience in the small vision area at the back. Figure 33. We decode waveform and electrical, 
electromagnetic information into digital and holographic states that appear to us as the solid world of human reality. Dot. The striking aspect of the game is the physical sensation of playing it. I feel, and therefore believe that I am physically moving back and forth, as though I am on a chair on wheels. External reality has fallen away and I am in a strange and compelling world. Anxious not to fall off the terrifying precipices, my brain sends signals to my body that create the illusion that it's shooting around like a pinball, when in fact I am stationary. Figure 34. The five senses decode waveform information into electrical information and communicate this to the brain to be decoded into digital, holographic information. Figure 35. Video games are simply hacking into the five senses to override the information sources they normally decode and present us with a different reality. Figure 36. It may only be computerized electrical information but the reality people decode can seem very real. That could have been a description of human life because the principles are just the same. I saw an experiment which involved a doll wearing a virtual reality headset. A group of people were also given headsets that produced the illusion that their bodies were the doll's body. The doll was then touched had an injection in the eye and messed with in other ways and each time the group reacted as if it was being done to them. They were feeling in their own bodies what was being done to the doll. This is how powerful and perception controlling even virtual reality at the current human level of development can be never mind what is actually possible. We are one no matter how solid something appears to be. It is waveform energy in its foundation state and at this level it becomes possible to communicate with animals plants and even apparently inanimate phenomena like rocks. Everything is consciousness and alive as an expression of infinite awareness whether it is a mountain, stream or forest. Mainstream scientific studies are slowly beginning to acknowledge what awakened people have known all along, that everything is consciousness and connected to everything else. Evidence mounts to confirm that trees communicate, feel pain, care for each other and organize as communities and this is true of everything. Some scientists are asking if trees and plants have brains, but a brain is only a means of decoding information and in that sense everything has a brain because everything is constantly receiving and transmitting information. In five sense reality this is done electrically and electromagnetically and you don't need a big chunk of grey matter to do that. There are endless other receiver transmission processes through which this can happen. Monica Gagliano, an evolutionary biologist at the University of Western Australia concluded after a series of experiments that plants use sound waves to detect water at a distance and have the ability to learn. Heidi Bell, an environmental scientist now at the University of Toledo, led a team of researchers in a study that showed how a plant could distinguish between the sounds of wind vibrations and a caterpillar chewing. The plant's chemical state reacted differently when the two sounds were played and produced more defense toxins in response to caterpillar chomping. We tend to underestimate plants because their responses are usually less visible to us, but leaves turn out to be extremely sensitive vibration detectors, Appel said. Buzzing bees generate a frequency that has been shown to trigger plants to release pollen. They call it buzz pollination, and other sounds have caused hormonal changes in plants. Dr. Suzanne Simard at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver discovered that trees transmit warnings with chemical electrical signals through fungal networks under the soil. A teaspoon of forest soil contains miles of them. The fungi operate like fiber optic internet cables and this system has become known as the wood wide web. Such networks operate at every level of the cosmic internet. This principle of communicating through sound and frequency explains the effect good and bad of chants and mantras. Everything is a Alive, conscious and part of an infinite web of life and consciousness, Fig 37. Michael Pollan, an author and researcher on these subjects, said of trees and plants, they have ways of taking all the sensory data they gather in their everyday lives, integrate it and then behave in an appropriate way in response. And, they do this with our brains, which, in a way, is what's incredible about it because we automatically assume you need a brain to process information. But what is the brain except a form of information and information can be processed in infinite different ways by infinite expressions of consciousness. The ignorant laugh and dismiss suggestions that we can communicate with animals, trees, plants or oaks because they can only perceive communication through human language. At the waveform level and beyond we are all connected to each other and communication can happen not through words but through the waveform connection which you can liken to telepathy. An article in Scientific American magazine about black holes as computers said, dot, to a physicist, all physical systems are computers, rocks, atom bombs and galaxies may not run Linux, but they, too, register and process information. Every electron, photon and other elementary particle stores bits of data, and, every time two such particles interact, those bits are transformed. Physical, existence and information content are inextricably linked. Figure 37, 
Everything is alive and aware and an expression of infinite awareness. The force that moves all things, information content and the illusion of physical existence are inextricably linked because what we perceive as physical is information content, form is information decoded from wave form states. Fig 38, physical reality including the body is made manifest through standing or stationary waves of information. Funny how the guy describing his experience playing computer games said, my brain sends signals to my body that create the illusion that it's shooting around like a pinball, when in fact I am stationary. He was unknowingly telling a profound truth about reality itself. To create standing waves you need a block or wall at each end called a node point which causes a wave traveling in one direction to bounce back in the other direction and interact with itself coming the other way. This bounced back wave then strikes the other wall or node point and returns in the other direction to create a perpetual motion of back and forth that itself creates a state of oscillation. Fig 39. When the two identical expressions of the same wave interact they cancel each other out in terms of forward movement and create a wave that oscillates up and down or jogs, stands, on the spot. Funnily enough the result looks like DNA and that is related to the fact that the body and physical forms in general are manifested from standing waves retaining particular information in a particular oscillating field. Fig 40. While the standing wave field is oscillating your body is alive and the moment it stops we call death. The human heartbeat is an expression of this oscillation and heart disease is actually a disruption to the oscillation which the heart is only reflecting. From this comes the fact that in the world of form everything vibrates dash if it vibrates its illusion. I say that what we call the universe is itself one big standing wave of information that oscillates dash moves back and forth in a regular rhythm. How right we are to talk about the rhythm of life. German biophysicist Fritz Albert Popp discovered that DNA vibrates or oscillates to a particular frequency and I say this relates to the standing wave. Russian researchers led by molecular biologist and biophysicist Piotr Gargijev found that DNA not only receives and transmits information but absorbs and processes it. This is how human genetics can be changed from afar by frequency, information carried by the frequency, and how DNA can be programmed. This will be very significant as we proceed. What we call evolution with species changing to stay in sync with a changing environment and developing gifts perfect for survival comes from the information interaction between the quantum field of possibility and probability. DNA and the human energetic field. The whole body is an antenna including bone and skin because in their prime state they are waveform electromagnetic fields. Grazina Foser and Franz Bladorf write in the German book, Vernetzt Intelligenz, figure 38, the illusion of what we think we see. Copyright www.neilhag.com, figure 39, standing or stationary waves that hold information in place until the frequency is disturbed or switched off. Figure 40, standing wave DNA. The latest research explains phenomena such as clairvoyance, intuition, spontaneous and remote acts of healing, self-healing, affirmation techniques, unusual light auras around people, namely spiritual masters, minds, influence on weather patterns and much more. The Russian scientists also found out that our DNA can cause disturbing patterns in the vacuum thus producing magnetized wormholes. Wormholes are the microscopic equivalents of the so-called Einstein rows and bridges in the vicinity of black holes, left by burned out stars. These are tunnel connections between entirely different areas in the universe through which information can be transmitted outside of space and time. The DNA attracts these bits of information and passes them on to our consciousness. Whatever happened to little me? By expanding the frequency band on which DNA is operating, by expanding our consciousness, we can connect with other realities beyond the five senses as psychics and mediums do. We can heal and be healed remotely by using our consciousness to deliver harmonizing frequencies to another's DNA. We can do this to ourselves through consciousness communication with our own DNA. This is the background to how mind can miraculously heal the body. There is nothing miraculous about this at all. Reality is designed to make this possible. But that knowledge has been suppressed to keep us in ignorance of our true power. Placebo pills trick the mind into believing they will be effective in curing illness and the mind's perception of this is communicated subconsciously to the body which then responds to that perception and heals itself. Surgeon Andrew Carr, professor of orthopedic surgery at the University of Oxford, said that thousands of patients may be cured not by the operation but by a belief that an unnecessary operation would remove the problem. Having to stop work, having to change your life, coming into hospital, all of these people dressed in blue with hats on, you're anesthetized. All of that, if we believe in placebo, is surely a setup to create a phenomenal placebo effect. Studies have shown that patients who have fake surgery, but believe they have had the real thing, 
can recover almost or equally as well as those who have genuinely had the operation. Everything in all infinite existence is consciousness, awareness interacting with itself. DNA is a receiver transmitter. Mainstream science has said that at most only 5% of DNA is active at a physical level and the other 95% has been dismissed as junk DNA because it appeared to have no function. We don't understand what it does and so it can't be doing anything. This almost entirety of DNA operates in, and interacts with, the unseen. Russian researchers have established that DNA is encoded with the same structure and rules that can be found in all human languages. DNA and the body in general is indeed a biological computer and if you know how to program the software you can cure anything you want, stem the aging process and extend lifespan almost as long as you choose. Instead of exploring these incredible frontiers the elite families and their networks manipulating human society seek to conceal this knowledge and, in terms of health, allow the pharmacological death cult to have its wicked way. Scientists from Columbia University and the New York Genome Center announced in March 2017 they had discovered a way to use DNA to store, replicate and retrieve digital files in the way you would with a computer hard drive. How long I have been saying that DNA is on one level like a computer hard drive that stores information. You don't need a university to understand reality because this information is in the cosmic internet all around us if people only tune into those frequencies. The often barely one-dimensional, physical obsessed scientific mind is so welded to five sense reality that it becomes desensitized and disconnected from the library of insight in the information sea in which we all swim. Crystals are used in receiver transmission technology and the human body is crystalline for the same reason. We have trillions of cells and the membrane of everyone is a liquid crystal. The crystalline pineal gland in the brain is part of the so-called third eye which can connect us to frequencies in other realities. We are receivers, transmitters, decoders and processes of information interacting with the cosmic internet. One way DNA communicates is through what science calls biophotons in the visible and ultraviolet spectrum, which are emitted by biological systems. Nikola Tesla said the brain is only a receiver and that is clearly so. Consciousness does not come from the brain but through the brain which is a processor of information both from the five senses and consciousness beyond this reality. It is our choice what level of awareness we allow our brain to process into conscious perception. Fig 41. For this reason we have people with very different awareness interacting with each other in human society with the most aware facing the ridicule and disdain of the unaware. Fig 42. Did I mention the inversion? Writer Jonathan Swift, 1667 to 1745, said, When a true genius appears, you can know him by the sign, that all the dunces are in a confederacy against him. He might have said unaware rather than dunces and the point is that people don't have to be unaware. They have allowed themselves to be. The brain is saying what do you want me to be? It is now known that the brain has placidity and changes according to information received and this is why the almost constant electrical stimulation from smart technology is changing the way the brain processes information into the perceptions of the conscious mind. If people self-identify as phantom self or five sense self the brain will process information at that level. But when we open our minds to expanded awareness the brain restructures or rewires to process that. Figure 41. What scale of information do we allow our brains to process? Openness of mind will decide. Figure 42. The same physical reality but different points of observation. The great inversion means that those who tap into expanded awareness are called mad by those who don't. You see it when you, er, uh, see it. A few scientists over the years have postulated that the physical world only exists when we look at it. They call this the observer effect. Support for this contention is now gathering in the science community dash among those who have ditched the song sheet that is, but I suggest they are missing the key word here, decoding. It is not so much the observer effect as the decoder effect. The connection between the two is that the act of observation or focus activates the decoding systems of the brain body. When we are not looking, decoding, then reality is always in a waveform state. Only when we decode waveform information into what is holographic information does the 3D world that we know appear to us, in our own minds, Fig 43. We are seeing more and more mainstream headlines like this one, your entire life is an illusion, new test backs up theory that the world doesn't exist until we look at it. The article goes on to say that the famous theory in quantum mechanics which argues that a particle's behavior changes based on what we see had now been proved to be true on the scale of atoms in a new experiment by scientists at the Australian National University. At the quantum level, reality does not exist if you are not looking at it. 
said Associate Professor Andrew Truscott. There is another aspect to this as well. Perceptions of the observer influence the way we decode reality from the information possibilities and probabilities encoded in the cosmic internet. Two different perceptions of reality will not decode exactly the same outcome in the same way. The process is encompassed in this quote from writer Joseph Michael Straczynski. Figure 43. Focus dash observation dash triggers the decoding process that turns waveform information into the illusory external world. Without the observer, decoder, everything remains in waveform. Accidents happen. That's what everyone says. But in a quantum universe there are no such things as accidents. Only possibilities and probabilities, folded into existence by perception. Yes perception. Endless experiments have shown how people add things to their visual reality that are not actually there, but they believe should be. An expression of the 40 from 11 million deal. My biggest book in terms of volume is called The Perception Deception because the entire control system of human society is based on the manipulation of perception. Those in the shadows that know how we interact with reality, but don't want us to know are well aware that if they can program our perceptions we will decode our experienced reality in a way that reflects those perceptions. This is the whole foundation of how the few control the many through the manipulation of perception. What we believe we perceive, and what we perceive we experience. This is not supposition, it is physics. George Berkeley, 1685-1753, after whom Berkeley University is named, could see that material reality was an illusion and he said, the only things we perceive are our perceptions. This can be confirmed on the most basic level in that a person who sees the glass is half empty will not experience, decode from quantum possibility and probability, the same outcome as one who sees the glass filled to the brim. A more extreme example is fire walking. When you walk barefoot on red hot coals with the belief that you will get burned then that is what will happen, but if you go into an altered state of consciousness, altered sense of reality, you can do the same and not get burned, as fire walkers all over the world have shown. Fig 44. An illusion cannot burn an illusion unless you believe it can and so decode that reality from a perception of that reality. Associate Professor Andrew Truscott said that his your entire life is an illusion experiment showed that the atoms did not travel from A to B. And it was only when they were measured at the end of the journey that their wave-like or particle-like behavior was brought into existence. Or it was decoded into existence by the impact and influence of focus and perception. The voice that I heard in the Ayahuasca experience in Brazil said, why do you fly from point A to point B when you are point A and point B and everything in between? I saw an article in Epoch Times headed Your Mind Can Control Matter, physicist which said of another experiment. Figure 44, an illusion can't burn an illusion unless you believe that it can. Atomic particles were shown to also be waves, whether they manifested as waves or as particles depended on whether someone was looking. Observation, influenced the physical reality of the particles, in more technical language. Observation collapsed the wave function. Waves collapse into particles, or appear to, when observed because they are being decoded by that act of observation and focus in an interaction between mind and energetic information. Waves collapse, are decoded into, an illusory physical world of particles and atoms, but these are only another expression of waves. Everything is waves. Fig 45. The cosmic internet is a waveform energetic information construct that provides the information blueprint for what we call the world. But what we decode as detail and outcome depends on the perceptions and state of mind of the observer. Waveform reality is a series of quantum possibilities and probabilities and it is consciousness, perception, that dictates which of those probabilities and possibilities in the energetic fabric of the cosmic internet are, waveform collapsed, into experienced reality. Control perception and you control everything. John Wheeler, a Nobel physicist, said, No phenomenon is a real phenomenon until it is an observed phenomenon. Or as I would say, a decoded phenomenon. The dream is the dreamer and the dreamer is the dream because the dream is a decoded extension or projection of the dreamer. All that we see or seem is just a dream within a dream. As Edgar Allan Poe said, if you want to control the dream you must control the perceptions of the dreamer and that's the global conspiracy to enslave humanity in a single sentence. How real and physical some dreams can be while we are asleep to the physical world. Dreams can be symbolic representations of mental and emotional states or connections to different wavelengths of reality measured by the nature of different brainwave states, beta, delta etc. The deepest of them, the sleep the Greeks called hypnos are way beyond the perceived world of the physical. I have incredibly vivid dreams almost every night while in almost coma-like states and they are as physically real on their wavelength as the world of five sense mind. Figure 45, collapsing the waves into holographic particle reality. Figure 46, Tom's brain, 
Mine was firewalled by hypnotic suggestion not to decode his daughter's waveform field into holographic reality. Figure 47. Only when he did could he see his daughter in the realm of his conscious mind. I have told many times one particular story that perfectly explains how we decode reality and the amazing depth of the illusion we are experiencing. Michael Talbot was a writer and researcher who produced an outstanding book in the 1990s called The Holographic Universe. This is a compelling pull together at the work findings and conclusions of open-minded scientists from the mainstream who believe that our physical reality is really a holographic illusion. Talbot tells the story in the book of when his father had a party for friends and invited along a stage hypnotist to entertain the guests. At one point a man called Tom was induced into a hypnotic state and told that when he woke up he would not be able to see his daughter. The hypnotist led the daughter to stand right in front of her father and then apparently reawakened him to his conscious mind. Tom was asked if he could see his daughter. He said he couldn't even though he was looking directly into her belly. The hypnotist put his hand in the small of the daughter's back and asked Tom if he could see what he was holding. You are holding a watch, Tom replied, even though his daughter stood between him and the watch. He was asked if he could read an inscription on the watch and he did. The story appears to be impossible, but it's not. Our five senses and brain body are also waveform information in their prime state and the physical brain is only a holographic expression of the waveform brain. Hypnotic suggestion acted like a firewall in Tom's decoding processes. At the subconscious waveform level, which prevented him from reading dash decoding, his daughter's waveform energetic field. Unless he could decode that into holographic reality he would not be able to see her in the frequency range of his conscious five sense mind. If she wasn't decoded by his brain into the holographic realm of the conscious mind then she could not impact on that reality and so get in the way of Tom seeing the watch. Everyone else in the room could see her because they had not been subjected to the hypnotic firewall. Figs 46 and 47. Human perceptions are being programmed 24-7 as I will show. And what are we not seeing because of collective firewalls similar to those that bemused Tom? Is it really just random chance that humanity can see such a ridiculously narrow band of frequency or visible light? I say it's not for reasons I will be exploring. We even decode our own bodies into apparent physical existence in the same way. Fig 48. It's hysterical. Really, given how we experience the world to be so solid. Color? Nope. That doesn't exist either until you decode it. Colors and shades of color are information fields of different frequencies which only become the colors that we think we see when we observe them. Decode them. Into that form, Fig 49. English scientist Isaac Newton, 1642-1726, rightly called the rainbow frequency band of colors a spectrum which is Latin for apparition or phantom and the origin of the word specter. Black absorbs all light, so it's black. White reflects all light, so it's white and different colors absorb some light frequencies and reflect others. What they reflect is what we see as their color when those reflected frequencies are decoded into electrical information by the sight senses, and into holographic perception in the brain. Figure 48, we are decoding, observing, our own bodies from waveform information into a holographic state. Figure 49. Colors are frequencies of information that we decode into the colors that we think we see. What physical? Our reality is not physical, but holographic. Illusory physical. I have been saying and writing for years and years that the world is a digital hologram and now more scientists are coming to that conclusion. Well, open-minded ones. Anyway, most people will have seen the holograms you can buy in the shops and those they put on money and credit cards. They are flat images that appear to be three-dimensional. Holographics has now reached a stage of development in which 3D moving images of people can be projected from one place to another. Fig 50. We have seen television programs presented by holographic people after they have died and duets between living singers and departed singers such as Elvis. Fig 51. Holographics is mimicking the very holographic reality that we experience as life. Holograms are a photographic record of light reflecting from an object. We can only see objects when light is reflected from them. Although I say there is more to know about that, and so when you are in a pitch black room you can't see anything. Rich Derrile. Director of the Center for Evolutionary Computation and Automated Design at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said in late 2016 on a Richie Allen radio show on davidic.com that the universe is a digital hologram and, as such, had to have been created by some form of intelligence. I have been saying this for so long while being ridiculed by both the mainstream media and much of the alterative. We live in the equivalent of a computer simulation like the one portrayed in the Matrix movies and I will be revealing at length the nature of both the simulation and the intelligence that created it. I use the term computer, 
But what controls the simulation is far beyond anything we would perceive as a computer. Holograms that we buy or see in the various media are created by using a laser beam and mirrors. Fig 52 Overleaf. One half of the laser is deflected onto the object and then onto a photographic plate while the other half bypasses the object to directly strike the same photographic plate. When the two beams collide the subsequent pattern represents an image of the object in. Wait for it. Waveform. Fig 53 Overleaf. The pattern appears to be just a random series of lines that look a bit like a human fingerprint and this is known as an interference pattern. The principle is the same as two stones dropped in a pond. Waves move out and collide to produce a wave pattern in the water that reflects the size and weight of the stones, where they dropped, how quickly and how far apart. When a laser or light of a single wavelength, coherent light, is directed at the holographic waveform interference pattern something apparently amazing happens as a 3D image of the object is projected. Illuminating the waveform pattern reconstructs the object's waveform state and our eyes perceive this as the object itself as the brain decodes waveform information into holographic reality just as it does with real reality. Replace the laser or coherent light on the waveform print with human focus or observation and you see the process through which we decode the 2D waveform cosmic internet into the holographic 3D world of experienced reality. The best holograms can look as solid as you and me, but that's all illusion and you can wave your hand through them, figs 54 and 55. This is the basic foundation of why our reality looks so physically real when it isn't. Figure 50, the lady is a hologram. Figure 51, holographic versions of people are becoming commonplace today. Figure 52, creating holograms. Figure 53, hologram and waveform which the laser reads, decodes into an apparently 3D image. Figure 54, holographic solidity you could wave your hand through. Figure 55, holograms mimic our experienced reality. Figure 56, even mainstream science is now being forced to rethink reality. New scientist, the UK mainstream science magazine, ran a front page story in 2009 entitled You Are a Hologram projected from the edge of the universe and Scientific American magazine gave similar coverage to a story headed Are You a Hologram? Quantum physics say the entire universe might be. See figure 56. Another mainstream media report in 2017 carried the headline, The universe could be a vast and complex hologram, scientists say. The report explained how researchers from the UK's University of Southampton, working with colleagues from Canada and Italy, had found substantial evidence that we are part of a massive illusion akin to watching a 3D movie projected from a 2D screen. The team, which detailed the findings in the peer-reviewed scientific journal, Physical Review Letters, said the research discovered irregularities in cosmic microwave background otherwise known as the afterglow of the Big Bang, which didn't happen. Costa Skanderas, a professor of mathematical sciences at Southampton, said it was similar to watching a 3D film in the cinema. The difference was that we are able to touch objects and the projection is experienced as real. We don't touch objects, but interact waveform to waveform and the 3D cinema screen is our own decoding process. Where I differ from even holographic reality orthodoxy is that I say the holographic universe is not a construct that exists externally to us but only internally when waveform information or the cosmic internet is decoded by body-mind into holographic form. The universe is not a hologram. The universe is waveform information. We decode that information into what we experience, inside our minds not outside, as holographic or physical reality. What we see on a computer screen comes from decoding processes inside the computer not outside. A research team from universities across Japan has developed holograms that you can appear to touch in technology like Microsoft's HoloLens uses headsets to combine normal reality with holographic inserts that includes real-sized digital people. They are actually inserting technological holograms into a biological holographic reality. Professor Skendera said that while we perceive the pictures as having height, width and depth they do in fact come from a flat screen. He said that holographic reality is a huge leap forward in the way we think about the structure and creation of the universe and could finally combine Einstein's theory of gravity and quantum theory, something scientists had been working for decades to do. Researchers at Ibaraki University in Japan say they have found compelling evidence that the universe is a holographic projection. I have been making these points in my books and talks for one and a half decades at the time of writing. You don't need a scientific mind to understand reality you need an open one. I repeat that a scientific mind can be a block on understanding because of its worship of orthodoxy and obsession with examining only dots and so not seeing pictures. A unique characteristic of holograms is that every part of a hologram is a smaller version of the whole and this explains so many apparent mysteries. If you cut a holographic print into pieces each of them will produce a smaller version of the whole picture. 
not just a part or fragment, fig 57. The smaller you go the less clarity you will have, but it is still the entire image. Alternative healing techniques such as acupuncture and reflexology can find points and areas all over the body which represent all the organs and the body as a whole. This has to be the case because the body is a hologram and in my experience even most practitioners of these methods don't realize this. Skilled palm readers can see so much information in the hand for the same reason. The hand is a smaller version of the whole because the body as we experience it is a hologram. Mainstream scientists like Professor Richard Dawkins dismiss and ridicule all alternative anything because they don't know what the body is let alone how it works. Figure 57. Every part of a hologram is a smaller version of the whole. Digital holograms equals experienced reality everything is connected and a reflection of everything else. This is the consistent message of aware people throughout the ages. Leonardo da Vinci said, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. Roman philosopher Cicero said, everything is alive, everything is interconnected. This is certainly true of the waveform digital holographic connection. Decoding waveform reality into holographic physical illusion goes through many instantaneous stages dash waveform, particle, atomic, electrical, digital, holographic. All represent the same information in different forms and atoms don't need to be solid to create a physical world because there is no physical world. Atoms are only a phase in the decoding process that turns waveform information into holographic information in the same way that computers decode different encoded information states from disks, data sticks or the internet into what we see on the screen. Holographic reality is digital holographic reality. Numbers are digital expressions of waveform information, frequency states and this is the level of reality that is decoded by the ancient art of numerology. Some people read waveform reality, mediums, psychics and so on, while numerology reads digital reality. But they are reading different versions of the same reality and same information. I have had psychic and numerological readings with different people that were almost exactly the same for this reason. Computer generated digital holograms have now been developed which are no longer created with analog photographic media but produced through computers which calculate the object's interference pattern. Waveform construct. A digital hologram is described here in a mainstream media report. And they look real. So real that when Ford used a digital hologram to show off a car concept model people stopped afraid to walk into it they thought the holographic car was really there digital holograms are basically the reality that we experience as the world the brain body decodes waveform information into electrical and digital holographic and so at one level of reality everything appears as numbers and related codes max tegmark physicist at the massachusetts institute of technology mit an author of our mathematical universe said the universe can be entirely described by numbers and maths. I will go into all this far more when I expose the detailed background to our simulated reality. It's enough to say for now that this is why NASA scientist Rich Darrell refers to the universe as a digital hologram and why there was so much emphasis in the Matrix movie trilogy on digital reality. Fig 58 Overleaf Figure 58, Digital Reality in the Matrix No Time no space nothing defines the parameters of our experienced world more obviously than time and space. Our very lives are defined by the passage of time as we go through the aging process. Computer cycle. Is that the time? The time has come. I am out of time. Everyday human life is defined, dictated and limited by time. What a revelation. Therefore, to know that time does not exist except as a decoded concept in the human mind. The illusion of time is created by the way the brain constructs its decoded images in a form where one seems to lead to the other. This can be likened to still frames passing through a projector to give the illusion of movement. Our brains take 40 sensations or snapshots a second out of some 11 million to construct our experienced reality and arranging information into a sequence would be a breeze by comparison. Yet again the prime influence in this construction of illusory time is perception and we experience experience time in accordance with our mental and emotional state. Time is relative to the observer, the decoder, and his or her perceptions. Albert Einstein said when explaining his theory of relativity, when you are courting a nice girl an hour seems like a second. When you sit on a red hot cinder a second seems like an hour, that's relativity. Werner Karl Heisenberg, 1901-1976, a renowned German theoretical physicist and pioneer of quantum mechanics said that a path comes into existence only when you observe it, decode it. Some brain malfunctions mean that people see only still frames. They won't see tea pouring from the pot, but only as a freeze frame because even movement is a brain construct from waveform, electrical information. Others see a car in the distance and then nothing in between until it suddenly appears in front of them. There is no time only the now, 
one infinite moment in which all exists. Concepts of past and future are just that. Concepts. Where are you when you think of the past? In the now. Where are you when you think of the future? In the now. There is only the now and we experience both past and future only in the now. We have to because that's all there is. What we experience as the passage of past through present to future are all changing perceptions and constructs within the same now. Consequently there is no such thing as time travel only illusory journeys of perception within the same now. A DVD is encoded with the entire movie in the same now but we experience the changing scenes as the progression of time. What we have watched is the past and what we have yet to watch is the future, but every scene as they play through is on the same disc in the same now. Someone watching an earlier scene in the movie will be in your past symbolically, but they are watching that in the same now in which you watch the later scene. Fig 59. Another DVD analogy is that the information on the disc requires technology to decode the information to appear as pictures and sound on the screen. This is what the brain mind is doing with the quantum computer waveform universe. Scientific experiments at the quantum level have shown that the past can be changed and influenced by the present. This seems extraordinary until you realize that what we perceive as past, present and future are all happening in the same now and what appears to be the present affecting the past is really the now affecting the now. Day and night are changes happening in the now when they appear in decoded form to be happening in the sequence that we call day and night. This is another collective illusion encoded into the construct of the cosmic internet. The calendar of time is a manipulated creation of the Roman church and clocks are created by humans and not by non-existent time. This is the clock time illusion. Figure 59. The whole movie, past, present and future in the same now. Time doesn't exist, clocks exist. Time is just an agreed upon construct. We have taken distance, one rotation of the sun, divided it into segments, then given those segments labels. While it has its uses, we have been programmed to live our lives by this construct as if it were real. We have confused our shared construct with something that is tangible and thus have become its slave. This is all planned as we shall see. The craziness of manufactured time means that today and yesterday are divided by an invisible line that we call the international date line, fig 60. Parts of it are not even straight. Research at University College in London revealed that top sportsmen and women, including tennis players and baseball batters, transform their experience of speed time, when they are in a focused state waiting for a serve or a pitch, they process visual information quicker and saw time to them appears to pass lower than to those sitting in the stands, how did he hit that ball, how did she reach that serve, they do it by unconsciously slowing down time and changing the way they sequence reality, people say of great footballers that they seem to have more time than everyone else and this is why, onlookers perceive time passing in accordance with their own decoding process, but in the mind of the player events are passing slower. This concept was portrayed in the Matrix movies as people dodging bullets, Fig 61. I had an experience as a goalkeeper in one match when time slowed down to almost nothing. I had no idea what had happened until years later when I began to grasp the nature of reality. A player smacked a shot with great power and I should have had no chance of stopping it as it sped for the top left hand corner. But as he struck the ball everything for me transformed into serious slow motion. I can still see the ball moving in slow motion high towards my left hand side as I moved across to get in line. I then launched myself, still in slow motion, and managed to turn the ball over from where the post meets the crossbar. This slow mo was accompanied by silence until my hand touched the ball and then everything crashed back into normal speed and noise. It was the best save I ever made and I lay on the floor thinking what just happened? Is this another unexplainable mystery? No. The experience was my mind decoding reality differently, that's all. Sports people talk about their top performances happening when they are in the zone and they describe this as a perceptual state in which everything is silent and often happening in slow motion. Here you have the zone explained. Focus, observation, collapses waveform reality into particle, holographic reality and the extreme focus which often happens in sport adds a different dimension to that decoding process. Those experiencing a car crash and other traumatic events say that everything seemed to happen in slow motion. It would be more accurate to say that the extreme focus triggered by the trauma made their mind decode information quicker and so create the experience of time slowing down. Time slows near the speed of light because perceptions of the observer change. The speed of light is not really a speed at all. It is a perception program encoded in the collective human mind. Light speed is not out there dash it is in here. The mystery of how two so-called entangled particles billions of miles apart can react to each other instantly can also be explained. This is not the result of the speed of communication across distance, but the fact that the particles only exist in the observer's decoding processes. They are not billions of miles apart 
but within a few cubic centimeters of the brain where visual reality is decoded. The particles are also decoded expressions of the same waveform field which reacts as one unit and not as two distinct particles no matter what illusory distance is perceived to exist between them. Now, here's something that will be very significant as we proceed. If you traveled at the speed of light you would be everywhere in the universe in the same moment or now. This is what near-death experiences describe when their awareness withdraws from the perception lens of the body. The speed of light is really the inability of body-mind to decode reality faster than the speed of light. There is a blocking mechanism in the decoding process designed to keep us in a perception prison for reasons that will soon become clear. In that single sentence is a colossal revelation about the human plight. Figure 60 an invisible line in the ocean takes you to yesterday or tomorrow. Figure 61, illusory time as Neo dodges bullets in the matrix. Figure 62, the great universal panorama only exists in the form that we see in a small area at the back of the brain. There is no space in the same way that there is no time. Look at the night sky and all those stars and planets across the vastness of space and apparent distance. Once again all that you see in the form that you see only exists in those few cubic centimeters at the back of the brain where visual reality is decoded and constructed. Fig 62. A computer game appears to have time as scenes change and also space in terms of depth and perspective. And yet all you are observing are computer codes on a disk or data stick being decoded into images on the screen. The AI Oaska voice said, Why do you fly from point A to point B when you are point A and point B and everything in between? Space, as with time, is part of the illusory construct that the mind uses to define holographic reality. In the act of manifesting apparent objects from the waveform field the illusion of space naturally appears to be real. Remember that what we call space is not a thing but is instead defined only by holographic images in our minds. In a room full of objects, images, we say there is not much space while on the great plains of the American Midwest where objects appear far apart we talk of wide open spaces. Space as an entity in and of itself is an illusion of the holographic decoding process and is defined not by itself but by the perceived distance between holographic forms. How can space and distance be real when changing conditions such as speed can change the apparent distance and thus space? Alcohol and drugs can change spatial awareness because of their effect on the perceptual decoding process. As the near-death experience is said of out-of-body reality. Apostrophe. There is no time. There is no sequence of events. No such thing as limitation, of distance, of period of place. I could be anywhere I wanted to be simultaneously. The scalar connection there is an overall field that encompasses the entirety of our reality and operates beyond what we perceive as time and space and the speed of light. I will call it the scalar field. The term scalar is highly controversial among scientists and those who challenge their orthodoxy, and I have read several different explanations and definitions. I am using the name scalar in the context of this book to describe a field from which the realms of waveform and holographic reality ultimately manifest. What I am calling the quantum field of possibility and probability is an expression ultimately of this scalar field which in my definition interpenetrates everything. It is similar in theme, though not detail, with the mainstream scientific concept of dark matter slash energy or unseen matter energy that is claimed to comprise the great majority of the universe. You will see references to scalar waves but they are really a scalar field because of the nature of scalar energy. Whatever you infuse into the scalar field is immediately everywhere in that field and so affecting everything connected to the field, which is everything in our reality. The scalar field in my definition is everywhere at the same time because it is beyond time. The instantaneous mass absorption of information puts the scalar field way beyond the speed of light. I have seen scalar energy described as something that is just a quantity without direction or coordinates. But you do not require direction or coordinates when you are everywhere. Nikola Tesla who gave us the fundamentals of modern electrical supply systems was well aware of the scalar phenomenon and I will come back to this. Figure 63. Doctors are misled their entire careers about the true nature of the body and how it works. Medical madness something to ponder. We have virtually an entire global medical profession treating the body and its malfunctions while having no idea what the body or reality really is. MMMM. I wonder why mainstream medicine is one of planet Earth's biggest killers. It's like asking me to mend your car engine. It would never work again. The difference is that I wouldn't dream of messing with an engine I know nothing about while doctors mess with human bodies every day that they misunderstand in their foundation form because medical science has misled them their entire careers. Fig 63. Why they are misled is coming later on. I am not saying that doctors don't do good work that benefits people, 
but talking in totality how can you not create mayhem overall if you are treating something that you don't understand? Mainstream medicine doesn't accept that the body is a waveform information construct and sees only the illusory physical from its perceptual prison of the five senses. The holographic level of the body is a decoded projection of waveform information and always reflects that informational state. The balance or imbalance of the waveform field reflects as the balance or imbalance, disease of the hologram. What's more the balance or imbalance of the perceiver also affects which possibilities and probabilities are decoded into holographic experience, including the health or otherwise of their bodies. Imbalanced emotion is the biggest cause of human disease, disease, and emotional imbalance equals energetic imbalance equals decoding imbalance equals holographic imbalance. Waveform distortions become holographic distortions and it cannot be any other way because one is a projection of the other. Even mainstream medicine acknowledges the reality of psychosomatic illness, and evidence for mental and emotional states manifesting as physical ailments is now enormous. This is how that happens. Imbalanced thought and emotion generates imbalanced electrical and waveform frequencies that distort the electrical, waveform fields of the body which then project into the hologram. In the same way balanced and positively focused thoughts and emotion can rebalance distortions in the electrical, waveform fields. I was told when I was 19 that my own arthritis would probably put me in a wheelchair in my 30s. 46 years later at age 65 I am talking on my feet for 10 hours at a time and waking up fine the next morning. Why no wheelchair? Because I wasn't having it, that's why. As I told the wheelchair predictors at the time, mind governs physical experience, and awareness beyond it even more so if we allow it in. Perception decodes reality from the quantum field of possibility and probability and in doing so dictates health. Doctors give a prognosis or life expectancy and that perception dash if accepted by the patient becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy as perception is decoded into experienced reality. Message to doctors, don't tell people what is going to happen to them or how long they have to live. Let them decide that not you. Mainstream medicine sees only the hologram or what is perceived to be physical and when your only tool is a hammer every problem looks like a nail. More aware people know that so-called modern medicine only treats the symptom and not the cause. But how else could that be when you only accept the existence of the five sense body and not of the waveform field from which it is holographically decoded? The cause is imbalance in the waveform field, most often caused by imbalanced emotion. And with the medical profession rejecting the existence of the waveform level they cannot possibly treat the cause. They are left with only the symptom and the way waveform imbalance manifests in the hologram. You have a pain? We'll give you a painkiller. You have a cancer? We'll cut it out or destroy your immune system for life with chemotherapy. What one doctor called weed killer? and radiation which causes cancer. Studies have revealed that chemotherapy also causes cancer and allows it to grow more aggressively because of its effect on body systems. Mainstream modern medicine is a killing machine and could not fail to be so for the reasons outlined here. Where does physical health come into anything when you consider this quote from earlier dash if we lost all the dead space inside our atoms we would each be able to fit into a particle of dust and the entire human race would fit into the volume of a sugar cube. My own view as I said before is that we are not even a particle of dust because matter is 100% illusion. So where do physical ailments like arthritis come from? They are not physical because there is no physical dash they are schisms in the energetic waveform, electromagnetic field and must be healed at that level. Killing the competition alternative or complementary medicine overwhelmingly targets the waveform level of energetic information with the understanding, among the best practitioners I should stress that if the waveform field is in balance the physical body must be so. They seek to help the body heal itself. These are the same alternative healers that are now being mercilessly targeted with fierce regulation and intimidation by tyrannies including national governments, the European Union and a global scam called Codex Alimentarius, created by Nazis jailed for war crimes which are all working in the interests of the big pharma pharmaceutical cartel to destroy the complementary competition. Code Alimentarius or Food Code slash Food Book seeks to use the excuse of harmonizing global regulation to take genuine complementary treatments out of circulation and give control over useless synthetic copies to big pharma. My longtime friend Mike Lambert at the Shin Clinic on the Isle of Wight is a healing genius who knows what the body really is. But that makes him a target for the authorities when they should be giving him every encouragement and helping him share his knowledge. Complementary practitioners are being closed down and even jailed for making any claims about what they do even though the evidence to support what they say can be produced. Mainstream laboratory findings cannot be quoted by alternative medicine in support of their work or prosecution could follow. We have the ludicrous and outrageous situation in places like the EU in which nutrition, food supplements and other products can still be produced, though give them time. 
but not a word can be said about their potential beneficial effect while Big Pharma can make claims galore that turn out to be mendacious and sometimes deadly. This is where we are in this war against what I will call waveform field practitioners, this might be good for you. Why? I can't tell you. Meanwhile, Big Pharma can by comparison claim pretty much what it likes about its symptom-obsessed potions that mostly do no good at all or cause more and often worse problems than those they are claiming to treat. It is pathetic to hear breathless voiceovers racing through a long list of side effects at the end of drug advertisements on American television. Some have even taken to putting pictures over the voice to divert viewers' attention from what is being said. They care about your health all right. Drug companies have to massively overstep the mark before they risk prosecution and even then most of the fines are derisory against the staggering size of their annual profits. The reason for this extraordinary level of bias against waveform field practitioners in favor of hologram obsessives will become obvious and it is not only about money, far from it. They want to destroy all alternatives to Big Pharma as part of a global agenda of human control and oppression. Governments Global bodies and Big Pharma have long been targeting alternative methods and practitioners in a coordinated conspiracy which I have exposed in other books. The idea is to delete all other healthcare and leave humanity at the mercy of these pharmaceutical psychopaths who have been exposed for shocking practices that include reducing drug supplies to drive up the price by thousands of percent. Fig 64. The global campaign against alternative ways of healing are made easier by the astonishing amounts of money spent in political campaign funding and lobbying by the Big Pharma cartel. Donald Trump's health policy replacement for Obamacare in the United States was drafted by people given hundreds of thousands of dollars by the pharmaceutical industry. Another point to make here is that Big Pharma poisons and potions are damaging and imbalancing the body's waveform field even while its existence is publicly rejected. I say publicly because deep in the shadows they know how it all works and therefore the havoc they wreak. If you could see pharmaceutical drugs on their waveform level you would see distorted and chaotic fields of frequency and vibration that interact with the waveform fields of the body and pass on that distortion and energetic chaos. We call this side effects when the distortions play through to the hologram. Swallowing poison does not directly kill the body. The waveform level of the body becomes so distorted and inverted that it ceases to function as an energetic organism. What happens in the hologram when poison is swallowed is only a reflection of what is happening in the waveform field. This principle further applies to both the mass toxicity in the environment and chemical infested, vibrationally distorted shit in vaccines and what is bravely called food. We may see black toxic sludge pouring into a river. But on the waveform level that sludge is a distorted and chaotic field of information which impacts on the waveform field of the river and the same distortion is passed on to the fish and other river life. Radiation is so dangerous and deadly because it distorts the waveform field of the body, and today's human society is deluged with it. The global health crisis can only ever be made worse by a mainstream medicine that has no idea what it is actually treating. A system so utterly insane can only spew out ever greater numbers of ill, energetically imbalanced people. The only answer, and those behind all this don't want an answer, is for waveform field practitioners and researchers to be set free from their witch hunt and allowed to address illness in ways that will, a, genuinely heal people and, b, stop them getting ill in the first place. Figure 64, Global Organized Crime Syndicate. Waveform Water Professor Dame Sally Davis, UK Government Chief Medical Officer, said, homeopaths are peddlers and homeopathy is rubbish. Homeopathy is a perfect example of mainstream medicine's arrogance of ignorance. The programmed thought processes of people like Davis follow this ever-recurring pattern. If we can't explain it then it can't be happening. This mentality pervades mainstream everything and those with perceptions downloaded from mainstream everything. Much of the alternative media is infected with the same myopia. How can people like Sally Davis understand the basis on which homeopathy works when they don't understand or accept how reality works? This is the chicken and egg bind that holds such people in their lifelong addiction to ignorance. The foundation of their disbelief in homeopathy is that its potions are so diluted that there are no ingredients remaining in the water. Note. Ingredients equals what I can see. If they can't see something it cannot exist. A mainstream UK newspaper reported that 2,500 vets and animal lovers had called for a ban on the use of homeopathy on animals. They said it was dangerous compared with proven medicines, you know the ones produced by the big pharma cartel that contribute to the incredible annual death toll of mainstream medicine. The key line in the article said, apostrophe. Scientists argue that the cures are so diluted they are unlikely to contain any of the original substance. I'll explain why that doesn't matter. Researchers at the Aerospace Institute in Stuttgart, Germany, 
have developed a way to photograph information in droplets of water. They dipped a flower into a tank of water and took it out again before photographing the droplets. They found that the energetic information from the flower was in all of the droplets. The holographic principle again. The information of the flower was retained in the water even when the flower, substance, had been removed. And the same happens with homeopathy. Energetic information of the substance stays in the water after the substance itself has been diluted away and it is this which interacts with the body at the level of the waveform field. I am not saying that homeopathy is effective every time or even at all in the wrong hands. But this is the principle on which it can work and often does. Drive Vladimir Pupnin, a Russian researcher beamed a laser through DNA and when the physical DNA was removed it remained in the laser in energetic form under the same principle as the flower and the water. This is known as the phantom DNA effect but it is not a phantom. It is DNA in waveform. Stuttgart researchers also invited people from the local community for an experiment in which they were each asked to take four droplets from a tank of water and put them in a dish with their name on. When these drops were photographed each set of four were different from the other sets. But each of the four from each person were virtually identical in their energetic signature. Fig 65. The simple and brief fact of taking a droplet from the tank and putting it in a dish had transferred the person's unique energetic signature to the water. This is how we are interacting with our energetic environment and each other second after illusory second at the waveform level of the cosmic internet as we download and post information. The principle was compellingly confirmed.